What's up, desktopers? Xavier Wills here for Desktop Bodybuilding, and we are back for another episode of Bodybuilding University. And today I'm joined by Nathan Viasha up there in the top corner and Robin Strand, first time appearing on a Bodybuilding University. He's getting a meal in, so we'll get to Robin in a moment. But Nathan, my man, what's been going on? I saw you uh, hooked up with James Hollingshead just recently, man. Nothing much, bro. Just me being me, you know, cracking on training, keeping my head down, but at the same time, just being active. Um, yeah, James obviously got a gym with JP, and I'm uh, sponsored by JP Clothing. Um, so you guys get over there, hit JP, discount code Tank, it'll hit there. Um, but yeah, man, when I always see JP, and to see James, get a session in, um, put James through his paces because he's not used to training like like me no more. He does all, all the, he does all the push pull, so yeah, man. We went we went, we went there. We rocked down um, the Atlantis chest press. We got twenty four plates in that bad boy. Um, we done some yeah. hammer strength press, and we just we just fuck around. You know, he's the latest athlete from ESN, so um, you know it's good to get some content spread over both sides and have a bit of a bit of bounce and a bit of fun. So you guys are just te- teaming up with the same sponsors. It's funny, man. Like sometimes it lines up. I've had um. A few guys where we've had the same sort of sponsors, whether it's been like on desktop bodybuilding and they've been sponsored by the same people within the company prior, we've been sponsored by the same people. So it's cool to see you <laughs> UK boys teaming up with uh, the same sponsors. So that's cool, man. But um, yeah, it's man, really same cool, sponsor, same cool to see how you're looking too, man. Like that's <laughs> it's an insane look for however far out you are. Yeah, you look really good there for sure. Both of you guys. Yeah, buddy. I think I'm mm. like, um, what is it, six weeks or something? Six weeks? Seven weeks out. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Because yeah, man, man, you've you've I've seen you six and seven weeks out before, and it hasn't looked like this. It's been you've been <laughs> just starting your prep sometimes. It's six or seven yeah, weeks yeah. out, just cutting back the curries, you know. Yeah, this time, bro. Um, we got to two, two ninety, two ninety seven. Um, we kept we kept it fairly lean, you know. It was two ninety seven lean. I think the one. The one after this is better, bro. You go to Stefan's oh, page, Stefan. Oh yeah. yeah, he posted it. I didn't post one. Yeah, um, I don't. I don't like posting. You know me. It's uh, not my thing, really. Yeah. Yeah. You just Stefan posted out. I'm looking. Yeah. Boss outlook. Oh yeah, yeah. Six down. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Yeah. So Steph posted it. Oh, that's how I'm looking right now. On the right top right, yeah. Oh yeah, that man, your front lat. <laughs> it's it's it just fits yeah. your physique so perfectly because it's like it just fits your yeah, dimensions yeah. and where you put, you've just nailed that pose as well. It's a good, it's a very cool shot. Yeah, man. So we just uh, normally, you know, like I said, I normally get I normally get fat on the off season. We'll try and get a bit fat, but um, we were two ninety two ninety eight or twenty seven, and we you know we were in fairly good shape at that weight so you know i didn't have the big um big panda cheeks hamster cheeks that i normally have i kept it relatively lean all year round well for me anyway um and yeah bro it's just it's come together we've been dieting now for five, five weeks and this is um the pack that after five weeks roughly 270 in the morning you know while i'm straight out of bed and i'll be obviously even about 273 but um yeah man we're, things are going good I think I could. I reckon I could probably be ready in um, three weeks, two weeks. It wants to be. A couple of points in prep, like with the bicep tear, with the ulcer of colitis, that I was kind of like on the edge of I have to quit, but I was like really determined not to. So I just, I don't know, man. Like I don't even know how to explain it. But I, like you said, like I just tried to dive into as much literature as I could to try to figure out what I could do to just keep getting better. And what I started doing was, I just started going and looking at my check-in photos every day. And as long as I was actually looking better and not worse, then that was what was keeping me motivated. Even though I was just like shitting my brains out and just felt horrible, I just kept going back to the fact that I actually looked better. And you guys know, like at the end of the day, as long as you look good, it doesn't matter how you feel. So that's what kept me going. Yeah, <laughs> typical bodybuilder mentality, but at least want to show that because you had like, you know, the 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 torn up hamstrings and everything as well. So I was like, that's so impressive, man, because yeah, I just know how much, how did you, I mean, you know, like diuretics is a thing in bodybuilding, but how did you get rid of the fluid? Was it just simply, you know, the typical bodybuilding, 
bodybuilder methods or what? Because I know fluid is a thing that comes with ulcerative colitis for a lot of people. During, well, so for my New York prep, I actually don't, I don't feel like this is a good peak for me because I had like a lot of inflammation. I was holding water. So yeah. actually I had to cut out certain foods between New York and Toronto. Um, like even chicken, cause I got an allergy test, food allergy test. I had chicken on there. I had mustard on there. Um, God forbid I had like fucking like almond butter on there and stuff like that. All food, eggs was on there too. So there was like three or four foods that were staples of mine that I cut out. Like I just swapped the chicken for fish and almond butter for macadamia butter, like just simple fixes. And I didn't do anything really else besides that. That helped my gut. And then uh, it actually helped to improve my condition for Toronto. But I make a joke about it too, because I was <laughs> with the ulcer play, I was having diarrhea all the time, right? And then I didn't need to take any diuretics because I was just actually trying to retain fluid at that point. So I guess it depends on the person <laughs> on like how. So, you know, we're just going to ease off the cardio right now um, and then just keep it the way we are for the next four weeks and then fill up and then pull it, pull it back, bro. But I'm feeling confident. I'm happy. This is probably the biggest and the best of being, you know, um, people keep saying my legs look a lot bigger on the front and the back, even the side. That's something I, I noticed, I man. It. It's it seems like they filled out more this year, mm. which I is crazy. Because how old are you, man? Thirty-seven. Well, thirty-eight in in uh, what in four three weeks. It's pretty impressive yeah. that you've been training so long, and then you've been able to bring up your legs more this year than last. It's it's something that you know. Like, if you were 41, I'd be crazy, crazy. I mean, I'm impressed anyway, but I'd be, I mean, I'd be like blown away if you was able to do it at that age. But it's, it's still <laughs> impressive what you've been able to do, man, considering you've been competing so many years. Plus, also, you were training yeah. legs hard when you injured your, or like you were training legs exclusively pretty much when you injured your biceps as well. So it's crazy that they've got better since then. So, yeah. Yeah, bro. It's, it's, I think, you know, chemo. You know, we realize what we need to do, but don't do no more. And he's your Instagram trainer out of um, oxygen, hey? Yeah, yeah. Chemo, chemo's trained me since day one from oxygen. You know, um, I don't do no more Instagram ego lifting unless I'm really, really bored. Um, but, you know, I just train out properly, um, different things. And I think for me, the come up because I, I'm doing a lot more Smith machine squats and pendulum. They're my um, go-to. So, you know... Um, I think that's probably a massive, massive thing for it. But I don't know what. For me, I can I can barely notice anyway. You know, because as a bodybuilder, you're always thinking of garbage anyway. Um, but yeah. you know, if people people see if people see it's an improvement, then for me, that's uh, that's that's good enough, bro. And people can people can see it, and they're your worst critics. Then you know, it's, you're doing something right, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. Robin, what's been happening, man? Before we get to the Pittsburgh Pro Guest Posing, obviously first time on uh, the Bodybuilding University podcast, what's been happening? And also, you getting leaner? I feel like you're giving and having the glasses. It's giving me more of a Clark Ken vibes now. And the white singlet, oh, I don't know. It's just something about it, man. I used to, I used to cop that when, when I first got glasses, because I'm wearing contacts now. But when I first got glasses and I went to bodybuilding shows, everyone just called me Clark Ken because it was just like dark hair black bold <laughs> you know sort of yeah, i've been getting that a lot i've been getting that a lot yeah, yeah. no I'm, I'm right now four weeks out from toronto pro so definitely getting leaner and I, I think i'm almost there at this point conditioning wise so just yeah keep on cruising through and bring my best to the stage again oh yeah are you a guy that gets in condition reasonably easy or no i mean yeah i would say so that's probably one of the, the best things about my genetics is that i've never really had to well, I've always been in I've always been in shape. I've always been one of the most conditioned guys on that stage, if not the most conditioned, besides a few shows that maybe I've I've fucked up. But for the most part, yeah, I would say so. Um yeah. but I always try to push myself as hard as possible to get that condition because I've always been a guy that's really focused on being the most conditioned as someone who hasn't been the biggest. I knew that that would be the one the one thing that I could uh, have an advantage over other guys with. Yeah. You surprised me a lot last year because you made really significant improvements considering you were going through some serious health stuff as well. And it was ulcerative colitis, wasn't it, that you had? Yeah, it was. Yeah, I had a bicep tear and I had ulcerative colitis. 
Yeah, so, so you you had you had an ideal prep. So Nathan knows obviously yeah. about the bicep tear part of <laughs> part of things. But um, yeah. yeah, dude, that that's tough. And I'll bring up uh, some video of you as well. But I had a partner that had ulcerative colitis, so I know what that's all about. And we've seen it, you know, Carlos Thomas as well, uh, Carlos Thomas Jr. having issues with ulcerative colitis, and that's affected him and and affected his preps. So for you to get better while having that issue during prep sort of blew my mind and i know you're a guy that's like really sort of like more cerebral you're really like i don't know you strike me as sort of like a really deep thinker how did you do that while going through the health issues you had the one thing is that i just i didn't want to give up on myself man like i was like basically like unless i have to unless i have to quit i'm not going to quit and there was a point uh... and that insane mentality <laughs> Oh, wait, I want to go back to that. Uh, wait, I want to go back to that shared screen quickly because your back shots are pretty crazy. That conditioning of what we'd went through, whole thing. Your body handles the stress, but for me, it was the fact that I was getting too dehydrated and my body weight was dropping too much. So I had to start eating more meals, and like I went from like six meals to seven to eight. Um, during that that like two week in between, I was not even able to sleep more than four hours because they just keep waking me up. Anyways, I just kept eating to try to stay like in around that body weight. So I was a little bit lighter for New York and a little bit more watery. And then Toronto was actually a little bit heavier and more dry. I think it was just, yeah, the foods come uh, combined with like keeping up with the body weight, not letting my body weight actually drop down. Yeah, your Toronto was better, man. Like it, that's what that was the part that blew me away. I thought he was going to regress and go backwards because I'm like, how can this dude get better? Well, in me circumstances and did, but. Yeah, sort of, sort of blew my mind. So it's pretty cool, man. But let's get on to this Pittsburgh Pro guest posing because that's what everyone's talking about at the moment. Because we had Derek Lunsford, we had Nick Walker versus Martin Fitzwater, which we'll see next weekend at the New York Pro. We had uh, Hunter Labrada, a whole bunch of really good bodybuilders, Andrew Jack, obviously, yeah, tons of guys. And we got to see Urs next to open guys on stage, which was cool to see too. And then him next to Ramon. So we got to. We had a lot of really good storylines uh, coming out of that one. But Nathan, I'll go to you first, man. What did you think about, I suppose, did anyone shock you or blow you away at the Pittsburgh Pro Guest posing initially? I think the biggest, the biggest shock for me was, you know, seeing Andrew. He looked a hell of a lot bigger. Yeah. I know you, got, you can't really judge Samson right now because he, he's in that down period. You know, he said he's relaxing, he's off everything. So... Samson, you know, that's for him, that's a bite. Um, also, for me, it was good to see, you know, Nick next to uh, Martin. That, that was, that was, and that was a good, um, you know, good look for Martin as well. Um, yeah. I thought Nick would be slightly harder, but I know the lighting was absolutely dreadful at this show. You know, um, again, Derek looked amazing. But for me, the, the highlight was um, seeing Andrew and then seeing Martin. And Nick together, you know, obviously Hunter yeah. was big, but um, like I said, you know, Nick and Martin could they compete next week, and then Andrew Jack was like the, you know, the stand up like he's changed the hell of a lot. So that's that's what I caught from it from earlier earlier this morning. You know, obviously, you know, the two guys, classic Ramon and yours, you know, you can tell the classic guys, right? There, <laughs> but it's a bit it's a hell of a lot different when you go against the big boys. You know what I mean? But it was good to see them to see them there. Um, and obviously, I watched a lot of talks, what people are saying in regards to Martin and uh, and Nick. So, you know, I think next weekend at the New York Pro will be a good battle. It, it could possibly be be um, a bit close to what people think it, it should be. Because from what I've seen, I really had, you know, you know, I said, said it before on this show, it should be lights out, Nick Walker in New York, and then everyone else fighting for second. But um, you know, whether it was, it was a lighting or Nick Nick and Matt tried to just like use this as a you know refeed or a um, you know just a practice load session, which I reckon that's that's what probably Matt done. That's why Nick looked a little bit bloated and try and see what he could pull off. But like I said, I'm looking forward to next week. Hmm. And sometimes as well, we've got to think. Sometimes you know, coaches will, like you said, will do trial peaks. But sometimes I think it's done without the use of, you know, pulling the water as aggressively or as hard yeah. because they don't want to mess it too much, mess it up too much. Now, I, I know Martin 
I don't believe he carved up for this at all. Uh, Martin said he was flat for this to me. So, I mean, if this is flat, and, and Martin, I, I was talking to him as well because he sent me some updates and stuff here and there. So they're just like, you know, private updates and they're just videos straight off his phone. And he is definitely harder. He has a different level of conditioning now than he did back in Detroit, like through the chest, through the midsection. And he looks like he's actually gotten bigger too. And I don't know what him and Stefan have done, but whatever they've done between shows, it's definitely worked. Because Martin, I think this version of Martin would definitely wipe the version of Martin that was at Detroit. What do you think about that, Robin? I agree, man. Like, I was definitely really impressed with Martin's conditioning here. Like, even, like, the feathering in his quads, uh, the conditioning in his glutes, really impressive. And he didn't look small by any means. He actually held his own by with everybody here, considering he's a weak O. Uh, that's probably who I thought was the most impressive. Besides, I think Derek's legs are really impressive as well. And then, um, like you guys said, Andrew's upper body had dramatically improved as well as arms really got bigger as well. Yeah, for sure. And I think as well, like Nathan said, it's not the greatest lighting here as well. So with good lighting, with a correct peak on Martin, I think we're going to see something pretty awesome. And then you've got to factor in all the other guys that we're going to see in New York as well, not just obviously Martin and Nick. We've got Tonio, we've got Quinton, we've got Beef Stew, Stuart Sutherland, who's looking insane. He's like a guy that just improves so much throughout his prep. So, yeah, it's going to be very, very exciting. I think Martin's in, in phenomenal shape, and I think I think it's going to be a battle. I, everyone was saying that, you know, Nick is a shoe in for the win. I mean, Nathan, do you think that Nick is going to win this New York Pro, or do you think it's wide open? Bro, like, I'm a fan of Nick. Um, to be honest, you know, I think Nick, Nick's a freak. I'd say I'm more of a fan of Nick than anyone else. The Martin, 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 Martin's my boy, right? Uh, I like Nick. I think he's a fucking freak. But from the back, yeah, it's game over. He smokes Martin all over from the back, right? Pop to the side. But that front shot from there is just not good. It's just not good. Um, He should win it. Like, he should win it, but... I think it's going to be a hell of a lot closer than what I what I originally thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a Nick Walker show and then everyone after him. But I think you're going to get a call out of, you know, three men. And I do. And I think, you know, Steve will wear the three of them and move them, move them around. Don't. You know, I was like... No, are, 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 are those three, are those three, Tonio, Nick and Martin? Yeah, you know, um, I had it like, you know, like, a, you know, an 80%, 90% Nick, 5% Martin, 5% Tony, all right? Mm. But looking at it now, you've got to fucking, I'd say you've got a, you know, a 50, a 50, you know, let's say a 40 Nick and then a split, you know what I mean? It's it, mm. that close. I thought Nick would be a hell of a lot better. Unless they've tried something, because on Instagram, he looks way better, right? And Nick, I know Nick doesn't, fuck around with pictures or nothing at the pictures like some like some athletes do so i don't know what mm. they've done here what they've tried or 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 something they've done something right to try something because you what, what we see on the pictures and the polls and videos look way look way better last week so i think they've tried something it's gone wrong and it's just looked a little bit bullshit like you know nick can hold the stomach right we've all seen hold it before but yeah yesterday it looks like he can't hold it. You know what I mean? That's yeah. the downside. But look, look at the back. You can see he's got bigger. He's he's got a hell of a lot bigger. You know what I mean? And his arms probably one of the biggest in the game. But when he stands there, they only they don't look that big because he's gone. He's gone that big. I don't. Yeah. I don't think personally he needed to add any exercise. I think he needs to come in the same condition. It would have been game over anyway. But it's going to be close. Yeah, man. I I, I agree and. There's something that surprised me as well, and I know Martin's got a phenomenal back, and I'll try to find what I was looking at. I was looking at it in photos, so I haven't really reviewed it here, but Martin had so much pop. Yeah, you can see it here. Martin has so much pop to his back. It's really 3D, down those traps, through all these areas. And I was, Nick's got the crazy whip, like on the rear lat and everything. It, it looks insane, and his waist actually looks really small, narrow, I suppose, 
from the rear lat spread. But in the back double, I just saw so much more pop from Martin. But they did stand side by side for a little bit. So I don't know if that's on this video or not. But um, yeah, really impressed. And even st standing next to Derek, we know Martin's obviously a week out. But and Derek's off season, so it's completely unfair to judge him next, <laughs> judge Derek next to Martin. But you got to say, like standing next to the Mister Olympia, Martin looks pretty damn good, even though it is a unfair comparison for for Derek. But um, what? Yeah, bro, for sure, for sure. What do we think of how Derek Lunsford looked in mists as well? Um, actually, no, Robin. For the first, do you think what? What do you think the odds are that Nick gets beaten at New York? Oh, shit. I don't know, man. I mean, on paper, Nick is the clear winner, but then when you see things like this, like Nathan said, it makes you makes you think. So the one thing I know is, like, for me, what, when you do multiple shows, like now Martin's, you know, this, if you count this as a show, and then he's going to the New York Pro after getting all the momentum from the Detroit win, I feel like you can just keep getting better and better as opposed to the first time you get on stage, you're almost a little bit nervous, a little bit anxious. That could play with your mind a little bit, especially when you put so much pressure on yourself. So I don't know, man. I feel like I feel like truly like there's always a chance for the champ to get beaten. We we've seen it happen many times. So there's there's definitely always a chance. But I think that Nick is going to make the adjustments and he'll probably come in better, obviously, than he looks here. So I guess we'll see. But yeah, man, my 50 50 at this point for me. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's crazy. Do you do you see Tonio maybe having a chance in this as well because I saw Tonio. Uh, I think Dave Plumbo even put up a photo of Tonio guest posing a week ago, maybe it was, and he looked crazy good there. And I was like, wow, that is just a very. I, I think Tonio is one of those guys that like a maybe like a Dexter Jackson, but you can't appreciate them unless you see him in person. Like Dexter was one of those guys that in person, I remember him just even signing autographs, and I remember his, him having his arm out. And just seeing the insertions and how deep they go in on his arm, like between his shoulders and his biceps and triceps and stuff, and you just get to see something different. So, so sometimes some guys are like that, and I think Tonio maybe has that sort of muscle that in person it go you go oh wow okay I get it you know even if his structure isn't as big, and it changes when you stand next to someone else if you expose their weaknesses and you have strengths like with Tonio yeah. he's very bubbly he's very round even though he's a little bit shorter and maybe not as heavy, but then you stand him next to someone else and he looks just as big and he's been bringing crazy conditioning. So I think Tony is a, definitely a threat as well, for sure. Yeah. What did you guys think of Andrew Jacked in this guest posing? Cause a lot of people were very impressed by Andrew. The only concern I have about Andrew, I suppose in terms of trying to gain the Olympia title is potentially the quads going forward. But, I mean, he looked really impressive and he seems to have added the size that everyone sort of wants to see from him. So, Nathan, do you think that Andrew is going to be <laughs> like contending for an Olympia title or do you think maybe just age-wise he won't be able to get there? I wouldn't say age-wise because his body's fairly fresh. You can see it, right? True. Yeah. I wouldn't say this year he's uh, going for the Olympia. No. But it's not without... It's not without far from his grasp to be totally honest you know he mm. can as if he has another 18 months qualify he qualifies does the olympia and then again takes the time off to do the adjustments for next year you know he's got to be he'll have a, he'll have a better shot then because remember bro he's obviously he's, he's always been training him right he's always been lifting weights he's always been big but he's never been he's never bodybuilder you know what i mean he's always mm. lifting weights and being lifting weights and doing bodybuilding is totally different you know, now he's focused on the parts that he needs to focus on. And you can see here his legs are up, you know, his back's a little bit a little bit better than it was last year. You can see, you know, in the in the in the shoulders, the whiff, everything, everything's coming up. And I think another eighteen another eighteen months. And then you know, you know it it's possible, you know, because I can't I can't see a whole, you know, reign rain in Olympia for eight, nine years on a run. I don't think them days that um are finished now, so it's possible if he keeps if he keeps improving, you know, he can he can get there. Yeah, I'm very impressed by Andrew and Robin. Jump in any time as well, because when we have um when it's like me, Nathan, and Beatty, we're normally like cutting each other off. So, <laughs> so feel free to jump in any time, <laughs> yeah. bro. Um, but yeah, yeah, Andrew is very very impressive. I think that he he 
is someone that I think everyone wants to see do well because he brings those aesthetics to the stage too. And he's like a tall guy. We haven't had like a really tall Mr. Olympia sort of ever, really, apart from maybe, I don't know how tall Lee Haney was, but uh, yeah, he brings those aesthetics and he hasn't seemed to have lost that whatsoever. So yeah, Robin, what do you think of Andrew? Yeah, I was going to say, I think Andrew really, he just needs to really perfect his posing. He he seems like he's yeah. super really comfortable with those front shots and he dominates the front shots. But you turn him to the side and he looks a little awkward from the back, maybe the hamstrings are conditioning and stuff like that. So I think as long as he can continue to work on not only develop his strong points, which clearly he's continuing to do, but if he can actually really improve those weaknesses, then then he's a threat for sure. The, the side poses, like if you have an awkward like side chest, awkward side tricep, then I don't think you can be in contention for Mr. Olympia. You have to have all your poses knocked out of the park. Mm. I opinion. noticed with Andrew as well, I think he's fixed it a little bit compared to what he used to do, but like on his side tricep, his front shoulder was like pushed right forward. So it's like hiding a lot of his physique and it just sort of looks awkward, like his arms at this sort of angle, you know, going back. And just little things like that, I'm like, there's no way, you know what I mean? Like just that you're coming last in that pose now just because the way you're hitting it. And that was more the Arnold when he came third. I noticed he was doing a few of those posing mistakes and because he was a little, little bit more stringy in terms of his physique, and that sounds weird saying about such a heavy muscular dude, but, you know, compared to his best, he was, he was stringy in comparison. So it showed up those weaknesses and with the posing as well, it sort of accentuated some of the weaknesses, but he has gotten definitely better. But yeah, I think there can still be improvements there as well. And I mean, Ronnie Coleman was able to get away with maybe not being the best poser, but that was Ronnie Coleman. So it's like, you know, you have to be completely yeah. dominant to get away with posing that's not the best to be a Mr. Olympia. So Especially yeah. now, you you need to have that hamstring drop, man, on those side poses. That was the one thing that I struggled with, is getting the hamstring to pop. And a lot of it is really just being able to pose that leg properly and being able to rotate. And a lot of that just comes down to practicing more. So. Mm. I, I don't know what you guys do. I think, Robin, I don't, I'm trying to remember if you do it a little bit, um, but a lot of guys with like the back pose on the back door bicep, I heard someone talking about it. I don't know if it was on the, I don't know which podcast it was on recently, but they were talking about like either flexing your glutes in or leaving them back a little bit and you know having the adductors pop a bit more. What do you guys do for that? Because I know there's like sort of debate about what looks better because I know some guys sometimes stick the, their ass out a little bit and they don't get any striations, but it looks very awkward, like they're half falling over. And I'm like, at that point, fuck the adductors. <laughs> just, do it, just do it with your glutes flexed. You know, don't fall over while you're doing it. <laughs> yeah, I always go for maximum glutes, you know? Like, I don't think you can you can give up any conditioning on the glutes anymore. So I always just squeeze them as hard as possible. Hamstring, same thing. Yeah. You, Nathan? Me, bro. For me, I just uh, only just start to master them myself. I always wanted to be to uh, put my ass out a lot. But now, you know, for me, if I put my, I put my ass forward a bit, my pelvis forward, you know, brings me, it brings me glutes in more. I'm my abductors closer together. So for me, I'm more of a hips forward person, you know? Mm. It's weird because like yeah. some people, if they put their hips forward, their adductors just seem to go like suck up. Like they can't relax their adductors while flexing their glutes, glutes in at the same time. So um, yeah, it's weird. But I think one of those things is like, yeah. I remember when I prepped, I used to pose my legs in between, just like not pose them hard, but just I'd flex my hamstrings, turn them on like between sets of like hamstring curls and stuff just to activate them and stuff at the start of a movement. So yeah, I, I, I don't know. I feel like from doing that, you get used to posing your legs different. You can turn your hamstring on different. You get more about muscle control. But I think some people just sort of maybe lack that a little bit. I know for me, like the one thing that I changed even from New York to Toronto is I noticed in my back poses, I was standing relatively straight up and down. And then uh, I was advised to lean back way more for my knees, lean back way more. Kind of like you can see how Martin's uh, done a really good job on his back double bicep, where he leans a lot more back to face the judges. As soon as I did that, my my poses looked dramatically different. Much, much yeah. better. So I think, again, it's just a posing thing, right? It's like, I feel like, yeah, if you if you want to have, like, the best pose, and you're going to have to put a lot of work in, just like training in the gym, like with reps and the fucking bench press to build your chest, if you want to have a good back double bicep, you better be practicing it a lot. Yeah, for sure, man, for sure. All right, let's get back to this guest posing. So Samson Dowder also there. He's sort of hard to judge. Um, and Nathan, I wanted to ask you about this as well, about the Oxygen Gym, um, him hooking up with them. But 
Firstly, what did you guys, uh, Nate, I'll go to you first, Robin, actually. What did you think of Samson Dowder's look? I'll bring it up on the screen uh, while we're talking as well. I think he looks great, man. And I think it's also like, you know, if you feel like you're somehow not going to be your best, it's a perfect time to come off cycle so you can just basically use that as an excuse. Not not saying like anything negative <laughs> there, but I mean, if, if, you, if you wanted to go and do a guest posing, and you knew that you were guest posing, in my opinion, I would probably want to be on some stuff just so I could bring my best. But, you know, it's if it didn't work out, didn't work out. And I guess that's what you say is maybe he could look better if he was on, but he's a freak. Samson's one of the best, man. So he's always going to look good. And yeah, even when he's off, he's definitely still one of the biggest guys. If you're going to critique him, he just needs to get his back better, really, because he's got everything else for the most part. And it, we don't need to go over his conditioning thing. Everybody talks about that. But yeah, I mean, just a little bit more thickness in the lats, really. I think that's the only thing he's missing. Yeah, and his conditioning isn't too bad, considering this is what, like maybe eight weeks post-contest? Yeah. So, yeah. I think, I think he, looks, he looks a lot better than me when I'm off, so I, I can't see shit. <laughs> he, looks a lot, he looks a lot better than... Um... 99.999% of people when they're on. So, yeah, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he looks awesome. Like, he's sort of renowned for doing these off-season guest posings now where he he's off, off or whatever he's doing is is much considerably less, at least, you know. And um, Samson is very honest about the stuff he does and, yeah, it just goes to show sort of how much of a freak he is. And, uh, yeah, I think pretty, pretty decent conditioning off-season. But, uh, Nathan, I wanted yeah. to ask you firstly – about what you thought of Samson here, but more about obviously him going to Oxygen Gym as well. But what did you think of him here? And then also uh, the Oxygen Gym hookup, we'll get onto that as well. And I'll just quickly get a drink while you discuss that. I think we knew how he's going to look, bro. You know, we'd seen him, we'd seen him training several times anyway, actually in the gym. And, you know, he's always, he's always posing, so doing a lot of guest poses anyway. So I think we all knew, you know, and, but we've come to know that, like we said before, he's, when he's off, he's off. And, you know, I think you can't expect the guys to be on all the time anyway. You know, they need to, everyone needs a break. And, you know, if they if, if they still want to guess post when they're on the break, then so be it. I would. I wouldn't be bothered because I'd just be like, say what you want because come the day, I'll still smoke your asses. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't yeah. give a fuck like what people say. Um, but, yeah, man, and um, in regards to Oxygen Gym, it's, it, it, you know, I think he's just going there to train. Um, obviously, I think what I was over there for originally was to promote the show, you know, um, which I think obviously he'll attend. He won't do it, obviously, but he will He will go there and attend and keep promoting it with Ash, with Ash Um what, what he said is his, is his wife's coaching him. And what was good to see is that I've never seen a woman in Oxygen Gym before. And obviously, he's seen his wife, so fuck, he must have some pull there, bro. Um, <laughs> that's that's what I was going to say, bro. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say, uh, you told me that women aren't allowed in the gym in oxygen in Kuwait. No women, so, bro. No women. So they're going that's out and I'm, saying that's like, that. When I've gone over, that's like over, 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 over by, by myself. No women yeah. are allowed, so, you know, but she was over there. She was allowed, so something's happened. <laughs> yeah. So that, that might have been something to to the thing to tick the box. And obviously Samson being one of those guys that <clears throat> is a potential Mr. Olympia as well. But maybe uh, it's it seems like because obviously they signed Nexilla as well, um, Nathan. Do you have any do you have like obviously it, only they reveal what you can? They don't sign no one, bro. They don't, they don't that, that's how it's being no so, like, that's how everyone thinks it is, I suppose, at least. Bro, everyone thinks everyone thinks they've got these fuck keeping crazy doctors there and all the hormones are all fucking all the hormones are all pharmaceutical. People just talk absolute bullshit. People just talk bullshit. You want the hormones? Get the same hormones as using oxygen in the fucking in Liverpool. It's the same shit, bro. It's just people just sat there, we sit there, we eat, we train, we eat, we train. There's no distractions. There's no special remedy. There's no special fucking GH. There's no special fucking sustenance. It's all the same fucking shit. Probably get better, probably get better GH, but you get real GH in fucking in the US. You don't get it. in England. If you don't get it, we use a lot of Chinese stuff. But you get that. That's, a, that's the only difference, bro. The only difference. But uh, in regards of signing, you just you know, if by the ones there, you'll make an effort. You'll phone, 
he'll send a message or, you know, it'll come to like, you're me bothering your talk and now I'll come to the gym, blah, blah, blah. Or you just go there yourself, you reach out. For me, I just reached out to ask her, no one knew me, said, listen, bro, don't to come to Kuwait, don't to train. That was it. No one said to me, oh, yeah, come over, put my hand in my pocket and went over myself. You know what I mean? So that's the way it is. There's no, there's no fucking crazy contracts and that, you know, and so... People just white like to put this crazy like myth on it, you know. Um, people might get paid, you know. I can't, I can't, I can't talk for for, for people, you know, because of all their situation. But there's no, there's no contracts in there, and it's just a hand, it's the handshake, or you go there, you train, and by the hook, you're up. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> obviously, the guys that go out there, they're looked after. You know what I mean? Like in terms of accommodation, food. <laughs> supplements all that stuff they need so that's obviously a big selling factor of it and like you said you don't know if, if they're paid as well but uh yeah it's 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 i mean people are talking like samson's going to go out there now and he's not going to get in condition like it's going to be worse because oxygen gym and a more known for bringing guys in big but when you really look at it nathan you're an oxygen gym guy you seem to come in pretty good condition <laughs> you know like like Roly, he started coming in really good condition as well while being out in Oxygen Gym. So I suppose it's not just known for just size exclusively. I think it's down to, I think it's down to hit or hit or miss, bro. It's just you know because Roly was a freak and Rami was a freak. You know yeah. they produced two freaks, yeah, there's two freaks. But then you look at the amount of guys in there. There's there's a hundred men's Z guys who are not freaks. You know what I mean? They produce two freaks, and people think that they're gonna gonna be that be that way in that way in, in in general. I was yeah, I wasn't like that, you know. I didn't get no distension. I didn't get I was always in shoot gate. You know, if you wanna it if it down to yourself, if you know if you know your body and you know, listen by that or listen coach or listen whoever ask or whoever or Abdullah, whoever your coach is, you know, I'm not ready. You you do the cardio, these guys tell you what to eat, what to do. If you think you're not ready, you should be man enough to say this and I don't think I'm ready. And then when you're going to do cardio and they say 20 minutes, go play the balls and do an hour or do 40 minutes. So I'm saying, you 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 know if you're in shape. Like for me, Stefan said to me, do 30 minutes cardio, right? The second I started cardio, bro, I've done 40 minutes because I wanted to do I wanted to do 40 minutes. You know, and he's asking me, he said, I've done 40 minutes. You know, he can tell that's me. A, that's 30, a good point, I'm still doing 40. That's a, that's a good point. That's exactly it's what like I one, said. It's like one of the 40. Getting into condition, like... Like when Dorian tells me to do 45 minutes of cardio, I'm going to try to do the hardest cardio I can think of because I want to be in shape. I want to be shredded. So I'm not going to be doing fucking 2.0 walking slow on the treadmill. I'm going to bust my ass on the Stairmaster until I see lines in my glutes. Only until I get to that point will I start maybe backing off if he tells me to. But it's up to me to put the work in it. And again, you can get on the Stairmaster. You can hang off that fucking thing. You can put half your body weight on that, hang on that thing, like draping yourself over it. Or you can fucking stand up there like a man, use your legs, use your glutes, squeeze until you got a puddle of sweat on the floor. That's the shit that's up to you. But if you're going to go out there and you need someone to push you through the training, I think that could take you to the next level. Because if you're always used to training, yeah. let's, I'm always training with my girl, and she, she she doesn't push me as hard as a coach would or as a trainer would. So maybe I need to have that in order to get me to the next level, to have someone there throughout every rep, every set, or maybe like maybe I'm not that good at training my back and I need someone to help me execute those back movements a little bit. Like there's always ways to gain the advantage. So what I said was, you know, I had opportunities before. I had Ben Pakalski was like, hey, listen, I'm doing a training camp. Come down. I was like, fucking right. I'm on my way. You know what I mean? So I feel like if if these guys called me up and I had an opportunity, I would take it. Because are you gonna get another opportunity like that in the middle of the peak of your career? You gotta follow your heart at the end of the day, right? So whether it works out for him, whether it doesn't, at least you know he's he's been following his intuition. He's doing what he thinks is gonna be the best move. Very true, man. Very, very true. Yeah, man. And the I suppose the thing is, it's not like he's gonna go out there and his wife's still coaching him. So it seems like she's worked with him, you know, a fair bit of well, she has worked with him a lot. So it's and I think, you know, helped obviously throughout the the time that, it, you know, at times when he's with Milos and stuff as well. So they know, I suppose, what they're doing. They've picked up knowledge as well from, from Milos and all their experiences. So if they want to just implement what Milos was doing or something similar, I think they can sort of do that themselves. 
through her own volition. So, uh, yeah, I think that him being out there, it's more that, yeah, it's isolated if Samson's good with that and he can handle being away from his home and his normal comforts, then it shouldn't be an issue for Sam, for, for Samson being out there because he's got his wife there as well. Like you said, Nathan, that's a that's a groundbreaking thing. Like, Nathan, how do you think people will react with a female being in the gym over there? I don't think, bro, I don't think they'll be asked. Yeah? Like, they're cool with it? I saw Bader all the time. Open the gym and open, put, let girls go in there. Don't think people are phased now, you know? I think years ago, you know, and the older, the older generation of Muslim guys will be, will be phased. But now, there's that many mixed gyms over there in the city and, in, you know, in, 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 Jibri, in Jibri and stuff and Salmiya. There's that many mixed gyms and that many European people. And no one, no one cares no more. The guys just, they aren't bothered because they're probably training in auction Monday to Friday. And then they probably go to these mixed gyms anyway you know, on Saturday and Sunday. You know what I mean? Because there's not much else to do besides eat or train. So I don't, I don't think the people will, will be, will be phased. And, you know, but actually I've been there many times and the guys who I know, who I associate with, they ain't phased. And I know on a weekend they always go to, you know, over ledger spas and, and, and mix it with girls and stuff. But, you know, like I said, uh, she 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 should go there anyway, and she stay with Samson. She's not going to go train. I've never seen her train personally. I think she's going to train Samson or give him his diet. Um, but what I see, I think chemo that you do chemo. He coach he, he gives you my training. Just giving Samson the training. Um, oh, yeah. so that might that might help him as well. You know, I'm totally yeah. ignorant on on the reason as to why there's no females allowed there. When you guys phone in. Religious stuff. I think it's, it's, it's just, uh, religious stuff. Okay, okay. Culture. Yeah. I think it's yeah, just. Okay. I think it's just culture, bro. Um, religious, religious culture. But from what I know, anyway. But I think the guys of our generation are past that now. And from what I, from, from the most time I've been there, and the amount of time I've spent in in, in Dubai, and I think the guys are more westernized now, and they don't care. But the older generation, like by the generation, and they there before, you know, was it. Big thing, men and women not to mix, but a lot of guys are always in London, America, Dubai. And for them now, it's just it's just a norm. So maybe things will change in the Dubai gym. I don't know. But uh, for me, it helps anyway because you're training in the gym. There's no distractions, right? There's no chick walking around in hot pants abroad. I was all doing these stupid ass bloody TikTok videos and shitty scales and being also, I'm a bodybuilder. I do this. I'm a bodybuilder. I do that. All this bullshit. So it's just men. Going there, training, fucking shit up. So for me, it's it's good. You can focus on that, and that's and that's it. It'd be nice if you got one day for girls, you know, like a, like, like a Sunday or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always thought it might, I always thought it was, it was a good thing to have a couple females in the gym, you know, because you can uh, you can train your focus that way. You know they're there, but you choose to put the blinders on anyways. You know, it's like train your focus, yeah. train your discipline that way. When you have no choice, it's like then as soon as you see one, you're like, holy shit, right? <laughs> So that's it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah like the prison so, effect. <laughs> they can allow, yeah, w- women on Sundays, like you said, Nathan, that can just be like an arm day or something, just like, yeah, that's what gets man. Uh, when I train legs, I don't, I don't want to be near a female, or at least when I used to train legs, I had back issues and stuff, so I haven't really trained legs properly in a while, but yeah, I, I, since I don't know, just to know, bro, like if you're in that zone. If you're an actual train and you're in that zone, bro, you could have the you could have the fittest chick walking walking past me, smacking my ass. I don't give a fuck. I'm in that zone, and I'm fucking shit up. In between sets, I'll look and stuff, and but when I'm training, bro, I don't give a fuck who's there. My yeah. it's it, it's it's game time. I think for the younger kids who just come in there to fuck around, it's a big thing. But for those guys and people who you know who train, they they don't care. And a lot of guys in oxygen, they're there to train. Not there to fuck around. They're there to, to get it on and go home. You know. Yeah, it's so funny because the, the difference I noticed between the amateurs and the pros here at Pure Muscle, the amateurs come in, they're like, "Oh my god, bro, there's so many hot girls here." And then the pros are like, "Hey, listen, if you come here, come here and train. Don't worry about the girls. Completely different mindset." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it's funny, man. Like, there's gyms that I've trained at, and I've trained at a whole sort of we don't have as much selection in terms of big gyms in Australia, especially like where I've lived and ha- live now and stuff. There's just not the same selection of gyms. So where I grew up in Tasmania, 
you go down there and it is like for gyms, it is horrendous, man. Your best best bet is in basically one of those like twenty four seven gyms. That is your best bet. Like in a small one too. We're not talking US size where you get these big ass gyms. It's just like you guys have like I've seen like crunch gyms like what Dave Plumbo goes to. And he he had a photo of that up. I'm like, that gym is bigger than any gym <laughs> in several states in Australia. I'm like, that's just crazy. So yeah, it's um very, very um different. I don't even know where I was going with that about gyms, but I don't even know where I was going. <laughs> We, we were severely lacking gyms until until Pure Muscle opened here, man, honestly. Oh, yeah, gyms. about women in gyms, so that's all right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I never... <laughs> growing up in Tasmania, it's a cold, like it's a colder state. It's like sort of more like the UK, Nathan. So it's... In Australia, you've got the warmer states, which is, you know, it's a primarily an East Coast sort of... Like, most of Australia isn't uh, habitated. Oh, inhabited? No. Most of it is okay. inhabited. So it's it's like I've driven across Australia 40 hours and it is just nothing. Like you hit Adelaide going across, which is a city, but that's it. The whole 40 hours across, you're not going through cities. You're not going through anything. You're just going through nothingness. <laughs> so wow. it's, um yeah, very, very different. But anyway, um yeah, <laughs> but anyway, in, so you've got basically all these warm places where people get in shape, wear less clothes. And then you go down to Tasmania where people wear more clothes, are less worried about what they look like, therefore. And it's just like, so you don't have, and the gym culture is very, very little because it's a colder place in general. I don't know if it's the same in the UK, Nathan, but it seems like it's popular now. But at least back in the day growing up, when I was getting into bodybuilding, there's very few women in the gym. And if they were in the gym, it's just, there was so few and it was like, you know, this woman's 60 years old training, like you have the old people training, you know, group classes and stuff. So <laughs> yeah. it was never a thing looking at women in the gym for me growing up until I like moved out and got away from Tasmania and started going to some gyms and living in places that are warmer. But you notice, oh, you know, okay, yep. And then the clothing changed, you know? So it's like you sort of you <laughs> notice a lot, a lot, a lot, lot easier now. It's almost like you have to like, it's like, Look around, you know. Look the up COVID and, change, and then the the wellness division was born, and then everything changed. <laughs> Implicating got more popular, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's a competitor now, but um, we sort of got sidetracked on the guest posing. I want to quickly go back to it and then touch on New York because Nathan, I know you don't have a huge amount of time, but I want to quickly get to uh get to all the guys and just give everyone a bit of a shout out on that. Um. Oh, no, I'm on Samson's profile, what I was going through just a second ago. Um, but uh, who else gets posed there? We had um, Urus versus uh, Ramon. I think Urus looked pretty good next to some of the open guys, which sort of surprised me just at how, like, there is still obviously a difference, but it was closer than I sort of thought it would be. What do you think, Robin, on that? Urus is pretty big, and, you know, I, I was also pretty impressed by just how conditioned he was at the size. Um like, even, like, his skin looks good. Like, his tan looks good. Like, everything looks good, man. You know, like, I think this is a great showing for him. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, yeah, he looked better than Ramon by, by quite a bit. Quite a bit. What I mean, do you think, Nathan? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I bro. Mean, c- Conditioning-wise, he he's way better. harder. Yeah. Yeah, he looked he look bigger than Ramon, as it is. Obviously, better, better, better condition, you know. You can, like I said, you you can see the difference between him, him and the open guys. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big difference. But you know, for 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 for, for the class there, he he he's he's big as fuck. The only thing with yours, bro, like there's not much you can really fault him on. You know, I think his height, his height restricts him a lot. You know, because he's because he's so because he's so short. The weight, the weight, the weight is restriction because. He could easily put another twenty pound on and still look mm. classic. Do you know what I mean? So the height does restrict him a hell of a lot because you, you like, like here you can see right how good he is and how big he is. But then when he gets on stage, he has to come down probably like what twenty five pound, near thirty pound or something. So it's a, for him, it's just a height thing. Do you think he sucks down too hard? Because I've heard him say that he weighs in and he weighs in a good few pounds under. Um, well, but, uh, that's the new weight restriction, at least anyway. He's weighing in quite, uh, I think, I don't know if you said three pounds under or something like that, but he said it was with clothes on, I think. 
Uh, so he's still got some room where he could, you know, maybe add or come in seven pounds heavier. And he was heavy in his off-season too. So I'm wondering if, do you think maybe he's pulling down a little bit too hard and he's still just got to nail nail that last bit where he can come in maybe a bit bigger, Nathan? Because you obviously both work with Stefan. Yeah, I think so. I don't. I, th- I thought he was on the uh, on the money to be honest. You know, like weight weight wise, because he looks fucking big as fuck, right? Yeah. There, and he's in he's in he's in shape. You know, I wouldn't say like he's, well, he's definitely he's, over look, the weight here. Look at the glutes, you know. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. So, I think he's I think he's just on he's just on the money, just on the money, you know. But uh, look look, you, you can even see it in the legs. Do you know what I mean? Mm. That's, you know, if you, if you come down 10 pounds from there, you're in shape. You know what I mean? And I know for a fact he's over 10 pounds heavy here. So, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, he, he doesn't look 10 pounds of conditioning off, though. Like, look at that chest and everything there. That's pretty damn good. And that's the thing, too, right? Like, sometimes you can almost yeah. get a, too obsessed with the conditioning. Like, you could be obsessed with chasing that condition when you've actually gone past where you look your best. And yeah. uh, then you end up looking worse because you've maybe improved your conditioning like marginally but then you've lost the mass that actually makes your body look more impressive so i think you know obviously with with Stefan being a great coach i'm sure they're going to nail it for the next one but it just sometimes a little bit of trial and error right that like, nobody nails it 100 percent every time hell we're lucky if we nail it 100 percent once in our career let alone multiple times right so you usually if we can get like 90 95 percent or something like that then we're pretty happy but to be a hundred percent that's hard it's hard to do. And, and the thing is as well with or is it's like when we say someone misses it in classic, I, I don't think you ever really missed it, missed it. But when someone misses it in classic, it's by like one or two percent. You know what I mean? It's like such a small amount. But because everyone in that class to be at the very top, because you've got a height and a weight, you have to really nail that condition or be very, very, very close to it. Because otherwise you're just either not going to be big enough because your weight's too high because you've got too much body fat. So you have you are forced into that conditioning, especially at the very, very top level. So yeah, if you miss it by a bit in classic, like even just you missed your peak, you're not quite full enough. It just stands out more. So, and Urs has sort of nailed it time after time coming up, uh, you know, with Stefan as well. So it's obviously that they know what they're doing, but a growing young physique as well, you know, each prep changes like, Nathan, you know, you've been doing it for years, man. You know, your first prep isn't the same as your last prep. It's very dramatically different. Yep. <laughs> yeah, man, every, every prep's different. Even, you know, this one compared to last year is different. You know, um, I, I was saying with Stefan, and I make changes myself. You know, like last year, I stayed away from, I was eating more and more chicken and turkey. This year, I'm eating a hell of a lot more fish. And like I said before, that's not because I want to, you know. And that's I've never I'm not a fan of fish, but this year, bro, I've been get I've been forcing the dairy three times, two two three times a day, because I want to get that condition. I want to get certain things. And Stefan gives me Stefan gives me a choice on my diet. You know, he puts meat, and he allows me to go chicken, turkey, steak, you know, fish. But I like I said, I, I choose I choose the harder option, which is food is fish. You know, when uh, as a bodybuilder, obviously the protein is still the same, but the hunger content and the amount of amount of body fat you shift with fish alone is a hell of a lot different. So, I think for me, that's that that's a change in itself, and you can see it. You can see it in the physique, bro. And that's because I wanted to do that. I want to go that extra bit harder. I know, I know I can get in shape. So, so for me, it's about getting that extra bit crispier now, and you know, bringing bringing what I can bring. So every prep should be different. And and if any prep is different because if it's not different, then obviously you're not learning, you're not changing, you're not progressing. Yeah, one hundred percent, man. I think um, that's a good. I think that's a good mindset, man. Because it's like at the end of the day, if you have the option, you make the choice to pick the better option that you believe is going to get you in better shape. You're just making small and small improvements, right? And that's what's all about is gaining those small advantages over your other competitors. And I think you know deep down what you should or shouldn't be doing, right? And, even if it's just something minor, like people make that joke about fish thinning the skin. But when it really comes down to it, if it, if you're eating that consistently versus something else, even for me, like I had no idea that the chicken was causing inflammation in my body. Like, how the fuck would you know unless you actually get your body tested or if you actually do it consistently for a prep and then see if it makes a difference, right? So 
fucking right, man. That's and it shows, right? Like you're making improvements now just because you're making small changes. Oh, people get so focused on like, oh, I gotta make these huge changes, but that's not what bodybuilding is. Bodybuilding is making small improvements incrementally, consistently over time. That's it. It's daily, daily choices. Every meal, every rep. I have the choice to be a little bit better. So yeah, man. Mm. Man, one thing Nathan, I, I was going to ask you actually because I didn't, I didn't actually uh, know your co who you're working with before Stefan. Uh, before Stefan, I was with the uh, Ask Ask bro from uh, Oxygen. Oh, gotcha. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was with, I was with Oxygen for, for for quite quite a while, quite a while, and obviously you know I tore my biceps. Um, wasn't able to go over to Oxygen to to, to train, and so we needed something that was over here and closer. Obviously, yeah, one of those unfriend, unfriends of yours. So he came to my gym, and we just went from there, bro. And it just, it just, it just, it just, it just picked up, you know. Yeah, everything happens for a reason. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> meal on meal service, man. Man, man, fish, bro. We got on the fish. Look, I'm <laughs> oh, on it, nice. baby. I'm on it. <laughs> That's a prep. That's a prep. <laughs> Nathan, That's do you have... I'm on it, bro. <laughs> yeah. Play. Spitting the skin as we speak. I'm all over the talk. You know, I wanted to get shredded because I heard Hunter was coming to um to Italy, but obviously the, by the size of the number day, he ain't getting ready for Italy. So well, I was pulling all the stops out to beat his ass. <laughs> Let, let's pull, let's let's pull him up, man. Let's pull him up while, while you said that. Um, let me go to open right here. So good timing. So you said Hunter might be doing Italy. No, but Bob oh, said on his podcast. Oh, did he? Oh, I missed that. That, that would be... He ain't, ain't, ain't getting ready for Italy. No way. He's got a, he's got a face better than mine. <laughs> his face is big this year. I always love how... I don't know for what reason, but Hunter always... I reckon he asks for more tan than anyone because when you see the other video, he doesn't look too... It actually looks perfect to this lighting with Gilco's video, but when you see him in the lineup, he's like dark as hell. He's like, like rivaling Samson. But um, yeah. What, what did you think, Robin? What did you think of uh, Hunter before he gets to Nathan's opinion? He's huge, man. I think he put on a lot of size in his lower body, and it looks like he put on some size in his back. Um, I mean, I, I feel like yeah, he could definitely bring up his chest a little bit more. But overall, I mean, he, he's put on the size he needs. So if he can bring it in male condition for the next show, then I mean, he's already been top four, seventh last time, so. I believe so i mean he's always a threat any show he goes into he's going to be a threat mm. and uh i feel like this is a pretty good you know middle of the off season to, to show up 300 pounds and respectable condition like this i mean that's you've done your job dude i, I, I love the comments with the hat though everybody just they get so hyper focused on one thing there's like 85 comments about him wearing a hat like who the fuck cares man <laughs> <laughs> dude if, if everybody I comment, everybody's commenting on hunter wearing a hat but nobody nobody comments on uh andrew wearing boxers uh, on stage exactly yeah because he's with very much just like very <laughs> underwear <laughs> but um yeah but um yeah uh, i'm not worried about him wearing a hat i don't know it's it's weird though like i feel like at this point now like if he takes it off it will be a big thing so now it's like he can't he can't take it off in guest posings yeah, smart business move. He got the Labrada hat on. You know, he's just uh, getting that sponsor logo up there. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, that's the smart as hell. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't even see that. I didn't even know. I didn't notice. But yeah, that's smart as hell. <laughs> and, and all the people yeah, like bro. Amy, just bring more attention to it. So <laughs> it worked yeah. out well for. Him. <laughs> smart businessman. That's a businessman. I love it. Exactly. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was impressed with Hunter, man. Like he's been able to. I was wondering if when he sort of slipped back at the Olympia, I was wondering if. It's like sort of like big crossroads for Hunter Labrada. Like, is he going to continue to slip or is he going to improve and come back a bit? And it seems like he's improved and come back. And last year, was I the wouldn't best say year slip, bro. No, no. I mean, he came fourth in the Olympia and then he came, I think, seventh or eighth the next year. But well, let's be honest, though, bro. He didn't really come fourth. Let's be honest, you know? Yeah, I, 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 did, I didn't. I think most fourth, people didn't have him. No, yeah. so he's still he's where he is really six seventh. The fourth was a was a gift, a nice gift. To say hello, thank you. 
Do you think the the Olympia following that Hunter actually looked better, or do you think he looked the same? Or I think like he looked better. Look better. Yeah, I actually sort of said the same thing too. I was like, he's very comfortable. I think he's in better condition, but I'm just wondering if maybe he wasn't quite as full or something like that. Because that's one of those things that you can't sometimes tell from contest to contest. Because sometimes I see two bodybuilders, you put them side by side in one of these Gilco videos, it seems like you scale them correctly and they still just don't, like one of their heads is bigger. I'm just like, how is that even, that doesn't even make sense. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. It just That's depends, what makes like, guest posting so fun too because you can compare people with images all day long, but it doesn't matter in bodybuilding. The only thing that matters is what you look like when you step on stage. That's that's what makes it so fun of a sport because you can speculate and you can talk all day long, but all that matters is when you stand on that stage, who looks better in that moment? Yeah. And you'd be saying from this, if you only saw maybe Nick and Martin individually, like just in some photos or you saw them from a distance, you'd be like, yeah, Nick's huge. He's going to win. You just assume nothing else of it. And now we're going to see this. Like Nick there in that video, just looking here, I thought, yeah, actually he does look a bit better and he does have that freak factor. And I'm like, is that something you need to see in person? Like, is that something that just overwhelms everyone else? Or is it that the shape's not good enough to to be, you know, a Tonio or a Martin because that might be a bad matchup for him because Nick sort of had the bad matchup, I think, and be Arnold with Andrew Jackson Sampson, which are completely different physiques to him, like height difference plus aesthetic difference. And it's just like it's going to sort of go one way or the other. It seems like at those shows, and it, it did sort of highlight his weaknesses by the physiques he's compared to. And like I said, Robin, earlier, man, a lot of it comes down to comparisons. Like a, a lot of it really does come down to comparison. So, yeah, I think that, yeah, yeah it just depends on the show. And I don't know, I, I'm thinking that maybe this New York pro is, he's up against guys that literally highlight his weaknesses again. Like Quentin, he has the big sort of round quads, super tall. He's like the Andrew Jacked, Samson Dowder type. And then you've got Martin and also Tonio who have super round quads with those big outer sweeps which sort of highlights, you know, and also Quinton has big sweeps on his quads too. And then you got mm -hmm. Stu who has that. So it's like, I think, and Stu has the crazy V taper with the the vacuum and everything. So it's like a lot of these guys, I think highlight Nick's weaknesses. So I think it's almost like the, one of the worst lineups that, <laughs> that Nick could probably pull in a smaller show. But like everyone said, theoretically he should still win. And, I think he's going to show up on stage next week and look dramatically better than this, in my opinion. And we'll probably all just be eating our words and, you know, everyone's saying that, that you know, oh, I think it's going to be close now. He might just wipe everyone away. You just don't know. It's so true. Yeah. Even, even just like a pound or two, like just that small little difference in where the water is being held in your body could just make the biggest difference when it comes down to it on the actual show day. It's funny how much the Pittsburgh pro guest posing has changed, especially, especially with YouTube and social media. Because I don't think anyone will ever show up anything close to what Sean Roden showed up looking like because there's so much exposure on it. You know what I mean? Like, I just can't imagine that happening. Like, we see Samson now. We're like, oh, he's, his conditioning's not that great. I'm like, the dude still has abs that are popping. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's, it's pretty good. I know, right? Yeah. It, it's easy I mean, to be critical, but I mean, I guess that's what we do. We we, we all judge each other in the sport of bodybuilding. <laughs> so. And I've got to say as well, all these guys, there was no one that, bitterly disappointed i'd say the consensus of who disappointed the most from what i'm seeing online or people were disappointed with was probably nick walker or maybe ramon because he's versus urus but i i don't judge that whatsoever the urus versus ramon it, you can't really judge that at this point whatsoever they're in different condition it's like different part of their off seasons and all that sort of stuff so you can't judge that too much but urus did look good but yeah, they're, they're all at different parts of their off-season. So I like comparing the guys, but you can compare like Nick versus Martin or all the other guys like that as well. It's, it's, um, yeah, yeah, it's good fun. The biggest, the biggest disappointment is probably just uh, like Big Rammy and like whoever didn't show up. Like that's probably more of a disappointment than anything, right? Because that would even change the game even more. I have more guys in that lineup would be even more exciting, but what can you do? Is Big Rami in trouble, do you reckon, for missing it again? Like, I don't know if he was like, updating them along the way like hey just heads up i don't have my visa yet you know if he's doing that then i think like you know there's no issue for him but if he's just like last minute going oh i didn't get my visa 
I mean, it, I mean, when, when I say issue, I mean people obviously say that oh, yeah, he got screwed at the Arnold because he didn't do the Pittsburgh Progress posing the year before, and that's why he lost the Olympia and got fifth or whatever. But it it just doesn't make him look good. It hurts his brand, and now people are going to be at least saying that narrative online, which is just for Ferrari, he's not even fun. So I mean, do either of yeah. you guys think that this hurts him in terms of if he's going to compete at the Olympia this year? In any way, in terms of even just popularity of fans, I think it just yeah, it just hurts you from the fans, bro. Like the, the fans are so fickle and bodies. Like, you make one mistake, they jump on you. You know what I mean? Like they can flip flop so easily. So, but then again, if he shows up at the Olympia and he smokes some people, then you know all those fans will jump back on the bandwagon, right? Of course, of course, yeah, of course, of course. Of course. It's funny. Everyone loves the comeback win and the comeback of everyone looking good. Nathan, you were the guy last year. You came back. You won. You surprised people. Everyone absolutely loved you. And um, then you you win a couple of shows and everyone wants to see you fall off your perch. It's just it's always been nature, man. If you watched a tennis game, like a professional, a few That's professional way, tennis bro. games, you, the crowd, like if it's a if it's a you know neutral venue, they will just swing with whoever's sort of like losing, and they, the person that's losing starts to come back, and the crowd just they'll get behind them, and then that person starts to maybe throw their racket or something, and then the crowd's just like, nah, fuck that guy. I'm going with this guy, you know? So it's, <laughs> everyone wants everyone wants to go for the underdog. Like if someone's making a big comeback in tennis, the crowd goes nuts. But I mean, no one cheers the other guy. So it's, um yeah, it's sort of, it's fandom everywhere, but in bodybuilding, yeah, it's 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 super fickle. It's super fickle. <laughs> yeah, it's a real weird thing. Now, I think we'll save the New York Pro uh, for uh, the next podcast we do, but I wanted to discuss Jose Mar because I feel like it's worthwhile discussing because he changed from open. I'll bring up his photos as well and some video too, but he's gone from open to classic physique. He just made the weight, made his pro debut in that. And I want to discuss the name of that contest as well because it's called the California Pro and it's in Spain. So that drives me insane. <laughs> and we've already got a California bro. I've got, I've got, I'm going to show you guys this. Very, very strange. It's by it's sponsored by California Supplements. So I don't know. I've never heard of California Supplements, but that's what I that's what I'm taking from it. But um, yeah, he he makes his yeah debut. He wins. I'm going to bring up the photos and stuff soon. But Nathan, I believe you've seen him already. What did you think of Jose Mar? I think he looked good, bro. You know, um, deserved to win. You know, definitely wasn't an open guy. I would, I wouldn't say that. You know, we're obviously <clears throat> winning a pro guy that's just like what, well, winning a box of jelly from your corner shop. You know, um, but he looked, he looked well. He looked well. Yeah, how how well do you think you can do it in, on a great level? Nathan, I think you're getting some gross lag. Nah, you can't put a nest on that one on the Olympic level, bro, because... Any any better? Yeah, no, nah, I, think, I think you're good now. I think you just got like a two-second lag, but you, you go. What a shame. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you can't... Um, you can't... Yeah. Nathan, you have like the worst lag of all time. <laughs> Maybe log off and log in and then we'll wrap it up in like five minutes. Right there. All right. Thank you, Legend. All right. Wait there. <laughs> One. All right. So, yeah. So, Jose Ma, I'll, I'll continue on with that. But, uh, Robin, what do, you, what do you think of this? Because this conditioning is next level. Like it is. Uh, I think that you see this guy on stage at the Olympia. I think he has the best conditioning in classic physique. Can this beat a C bum? Because he was like, this guy was open last year and he placed top five in shows. So like, it, it can the conditioning outdo? Um, I mean, the best guy in the world. Well, I mean, you said it, bro. Like this is next level conditioning, but I think he's going to need bigger, better quads in order to come anywhere near Chris. Chris just has the freakiest, most insane quads, and yeah, I mean, yeah, glutes and, and hamstrings are definitely important. And this guy's got them all day long, but I don't know, man. It's if you don't got the quad sweep, it's going to be real hard to take out the champ like Chris, who's got that quad sweep. So I don't know, man. It's it's a great physique though, and I, I'm a I'm a fucking conditioning guy, so this guy definitely draws the eye for me. Um, just staring at his glutes all day, you know what I mean? But <laughs> even even the back, the lower back, everything like from head to toe in the back, 
basically he's got that. But then from the front, there's definitely room for improvement. So and he's going to be a threat, no doubt, especially if this is his first time class physique, he's winning the show. And that tells you something, that's for sure. Yeah. It's a, it's just crazy to me that he's gone from open, which uh, I know Nathan obviously said, like, he and he did place top five in shows, open shows last year, but they weren't the deepest open shows, but still very, very respectable. Like, he's only like 22 or something, 23, something like that. Super, super young. So he's definitely got a future, but he is, I think, very much struggling to make the weight now. Obviously, with that weight limit increasing, it opened up for him to go down to classic. And at first, I hated it. I hated seeing a guy going from open to classic because it's never worked in the past. We saw Regan tried to do it, and it didn't work. I mean, uh, I'm just very intrigued to see because I think that he's going to be the most muscular guy probably on stage at the Classic Physique Olympia because that mm. the, the level of muscularity in the back is just insane. And like Robin said, like Nathan, do you think that he can do damage with his quads? Because they're not as big as, you know, like, or as round as, like, Urus, who's up there, or Ramon and whatnot. Well, you know, he sure, he sure plays, bro, but in regards to, like, Olympian and stuff, I don't even know. You give him maybe seven, eight, maybe, something like that, but you, can, you can't say it until, until he's extra taller, guys. He's a, he's a lot taller than, than yours, you know, so it's nice to be seeing him next to someone like Wesley, who's big and tall, you know, and Wesley's a big muscle person as well. Yeah, I, I I just, I see this physique and I'm just so impressed by the conditioning, so I don't know which way they go. I don't know if, you know, because there are other guys that you can say, yeah, maybe they're, they're a bit prettier, but some of these guys really do surprise me at how, aesthetic they become when they start you know really controlling their midsection and training for this class in every way with the posing and everything like hitting that pose there i would have never predicted this guy would be able to pull a fat pose even though he didn't have a bad physique last year or anything but an open guy i just couldn't imagine him pulling it off in that sort of way so it's pretty cool to see what some of these classic guys do to improve their physiques while being weight restricted yeah he's done a good job yeah, for sure. Like that, that back double. Do you think that back, back double would beat? I know it's impossible to say about seeing him side by side. Do you think that would beat everyone in the classic physique in the Olympia, or go close to it? Everyone except Chris. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I, I feel like we should have a. Uh, it's hard to have a side bet because it's bodybuilding and it's subjective. But <laughs> <laughs> we can maybe have the fans decide and have like fifty bucks on it on who wins a back double bicep at the Olympia. I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, willing yeah. to take the bet. You know you're going to see a side-by-side -side comparison in the next couple of days come out on the buys and tries or whatever. <laughs> I saw it today. I saw I've seen it today. I literally... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I, I need to... I've seen... I've seen this done about three times, so I'm sure if he just allows tagged photos that I'll go on with Bruce there. So that was one that was bound to happen. Uh, yeah, they're, they're putting him next side-by-side -side with Bruce. So if you go down one, there, there, there. Oh, go up. Up to the left. Oh, there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Back double. Well, I mean, yeah. Uh, like, Chris has very different hamstrings. Like, with that, he's got that hamstring tear. I don't know if that's on the right one there. It looks like it's that. But very different. Like, this guy has the corded sort of hamstrings, like the look that, has, uh, like, Regan Grimes has, but probably yeah. an extra level of conditioning. And then Chris has these complete unique ones, which look cool in their own right as well. And then Ramones are sort of different again. I just think that this level of conditioning is going to, yeah, I think it's going to shock some people. He's even got more of that, like we were talking about, like uh, filling in the adductors. He's got like that adductor magnus, the, the inside of that like inner hamstring glute that touches yeah. there, which looks pretty impressive. That makes his legs look even thicker than they are. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Just, oh yeah, I'm just so super impressed like i try not to have like biases especially when i i have an early call on someone that they're going to do really well but then it's sort of hard i think i have this subconscious bias that when i see their updates after that when i make a call on someone doing well on the show i'm like look at these updates yeah you see <laughs> so yeah i think this is that subconscious bias but yeah i think he's gonna do awesome but uh Robin, I want to thank you, man, for coming on the show. Uh, I appreciate you making an appearance. I'd love to have you on more, bro, because I've seen you on, obviously, like, Beatty's podcast. I've seen you on other shows as well. I saw you on uh, 
RX Muscles uh, Iron Therapy as well with Leslie, yeah. who who I work with, and Leslie's awesome. And uh, yeah, I've, I've been I've seen you around, and then we've I think we've messaged before, and yeah, it's cool to finally be able to do it. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming on, man. Do you have anything you want to promote or anything? Uh, well, I mean, I have a podcast too. You guys want to check out Canadian Beef Podcast? We're trying to promote that. But other than that, I just want to say, yeah, thanks, man. I really appreciate you having me on. It was a lot of fun. It was awesome to meet you, Nathan, as well. So thanks, if I don't man, talk to you, best of, best of luck for the rest of your prep. And uh, yeah, I'll Thank talk you, to you guys. Bro. Yeah, appreciate you. And I'll put the links as well to all of your guys' stuff in the description below. So I encourage everyone that's watching this and listening to this, these guys do this just because they're really good dudes. And, and Nathan as well, special shout out to you as well, bro, because you do this. You've done this as well at like midnight and like 1 a.m. and shit before. So I know it's yeah. where you are now. So I appreciate you always doing this as always. So follow Nathan's YouTube channel. He's putting out some good shit lately and he's looking awesome. So follow him on all, all his socials. And Robin, thank you for doing this as well last minute. Um, really appreciate it, dude. And you're doing an awesome job and I've been able to catch more of your stuff online too. So follow the Canadian Beef Podcast. Follow all these guys' stuff in the description below. I think Nathan's website has trend print everyday t-shirts or something <laughs> like that so <laughs> okay. we'll do a, a, a link to i think it's the north is it the north northwest mecca? yeah northwest northwest mecca they call it uk bro ship we ship all our clothing worldwide right now as well and there's a massive massive new drop as of next week bro so get over there sick awesome sweet i'll, uh, mm-hmm. I'll link up in the description below but uh, thank yes, you, guys. Please. That's it for this one. Let us know all your uh, opinions on the stuff in the description below. But for myself, Xavier Wills, Robin Strand, and <laughs> Nathan Diasha, IFB, Pro Bodybuilders, we are out. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Bodybuilding University. And if you did, give the video a thumbs up, smash that like button, and also subscribe and click the notification bell button. And that's particularly important because this is on a new channel compared to the original desktop bodybuilding channel. Now, both channels will still be running. The original channel will have more bodybuilding news, and this one will have the podcast and interviews. So make sure you subscribe. And if you're not subscribed to the original desktop bodybuilding channel, head over there and subscribe to that as well. Anyway, guys, that's it for this one. For all the guys at Bodybuilding University and myself, Xavier Wills, we are out.